Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at estimated liabilities. This topic is covered in the introductory accounting course as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. So share the wealth, especially nowadays with the coronavirus out there. And please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources if you are looking to supplement your accounting education and or study for your CPA exam. Please check out my website for additional resources. So what are estimated liability? Well, we talked about liabilities earlier, and we know that a liability is something that you have to pay in the future. Usually, you know the amount, when you have to pay it, and how much. There are some liabilities that we don't know all three components. What are the three components? You know how much, how much you have to pay, when, and for what purpose. So basically, you know those three, and you know the amount, of course, how much. So an estimated liability, you might have a known liability. You, you know you have a liability, but the amount is uncertain. So the amount, you really don't know. Are you going to pay $10, $10,000, or $10 million? But that number can be reasonably estimated. What are some examples? Pensions. When you have employees, health care, vacation pay, and warranties. So in this session, we would look at those, what we call estimated liabilities, starting with health and pension benefits. So when we talk about health and pension benefit, think 30, 40 years down the road. These are retirees. They are working right now. So these four individuals are young individuals who are working right now, but maybe 30 to 40 years from now, they will be sitting on the beach in Florida and they're getting their pension and they have their health insurance covered. So what's going to happen is this. As they work now, so as they work now, the employer will have to record the expense. Why? Because you have to record the expense when it's accruing. The expense is accruing now. As they work now for the company, the company will have an obligation for the future. Therefore, what we have to do, we have to record the expense now. So employer expenses for pension or medical, dental, life, and disability insurance is an example of that estimated liability. So let's assume, to kind of show you how it works, assume an employer agrees to pay an amount for medical insurance equal to 8,000 and contribute an additional 10% to the employer 120,000 gross salaries to a retirement program. So what happened is this. We're going to contribute uh, we're going to have to contribute 10% of their salary, which is 12000 and we're going to have to incur, we think we're going to have to incur 8000 in medical insurance. Now, this 8000 may not be accurate. Why? Because we don't know how much it's going to cost, but we think 8000 should cover the medical insurance down the road. So that's why they are called estimated liabilities. So what do we have to do when that happens? What do we have to do? We have to debit employee benefit expense, some sort of an expense account. So we're going to call it employee benefit expense. So notice we debited an expense for a total of 20000 We credit employee medical insurance payable because remember, we're going to have to come up with $8,000 down the road to pay for their medical insurance or, or we think that's how much we're going to end up paying. And we're going to have to contribute 10% of their salary. 10% of 120 is 12000 to a, to a retirement program. So all in all, they are working now. We take the expense now. We take the expense now. We may not have to pay this until, I don't know, 30 years later. I don't know how long it's going to take. 40 years later, 25 years later, depending on when they, depending on when they, when they retire. So when they retire, we don't really have an expense. All what we do when they are retired, we have to fund, we have to fund the liability. We have to pay the liability. So we record the expense now for a liability that's going to be paid who knows when down the road. Another example of estimated liabilities is vacation benefit. So when you work for a company and you take a vacation, what happens is as you're taking the vacation, you're getting paid. But you are not really producing when you're taking the vacation. 
you took the vacation you, you really earned your vacation when you are producing when you are working so when you are when you are on vacation you are not really working so you're not really incurring an expense so let's assume to see how we do this from an accounting perspective assume an employee earned two weeks of paid vacation each year so you work for the company for two years uh, for for a year and for every year you earn two weeks so by december 31st so let's assume you worked one year and because you work one year you earned two weeks of vacation now you did not take the two weeks because you earned them you earned them now what happened the company will have to record those two weeks as an expense in this year so this is year one okay so in year one you work the full year and you earn two weeks of vacation that you might be able to take in either year two usually in year two you're going to be able to take in year two what's going to happen let's assume uh, uh, for two weeks you're going to be paid 3200 so what's going to happen is this the company will have to debit vacation benefit expense some sort of an expense 3200 by december 31st so by the end of the year what we have to do is we have to record the expense we have to record the expense although you did not go on vacation all what you did is you earned your vacation as you earned your vacation the company incurred an expense so the company will debit vacation expense and they will credit vacation payable now when you go to disney when you go to disney what's going to happen when they're paying you when you're in disney what's going to happen it's not an expense anymore let's assume you took 400 of that vacation so far you did not take the full thing therefore they will debit vacation benefit payable 400 and they will credit cash so when you are in disney and you're getting paid well it's not an expense for the company why because the expense they already they already recorded your expense when you have earned it and the reason why they have to record the expense let's assume you leave the company you don't even go on vacation they still have to pay you that money therefore the company will have to record an expense whether you took the vacation or not yet so this is what we mean by estimated liability but we have I'm sorry yeah, estimated liability also basically an estimated expense as well another example of of estimated liabilities is bonus plan what is a bonus plan is when the company reward you for your work now here's what happened the company usually uses the profit for example the, pro the company made a profit of let's just assume a hundred thousand dollar and they say because we made a profit of a hundred thousand dollar you're the manager you're going to get ten percent so it's going to get ten thousand dollar now what's going to happen is this the company year end is december 31st but the company don't know exactly the profit maybe until march 1st when they prepare their financial statements so what's going to happen at december 31st they will estimate and we we might be we might make a hundred thousand but they're really not sure 100 percent therefore what they do is they debit an expense bonus expense of ten thousand credit bonus payable now when they pay you this payable in march you know maybe a little bit more than ten thousand a little bit less than ten thousand but they think it's going to be around ten thousand therefore what we did is we recorded the expense when it took place it took place at the end of the year when you earned it when you earned it when you earned the when you earned it when you earned the bonus although you know it's not paid until march because you earned it for the year it has to be expensed during the year not when when paid another common or classic estimated liability is warranties now what are warranties think about when you buy a car when you buy a car you may get a warranty with that car or when you buy some sort of tv or electronic equipment so how does it work how how do warranties work well what's a warranty it's the seller's obligation to either replace or fix a product or service that f failed to perform as expected so the product did not perform as you thought it will be or it you know uh, they need to fix it so the seller report expected warranty expense in the period when the revenue from the sale is reported so let's assume this is 2020 this is 2020 this family purchased the car now the, the this is 2020 so the sale took place in 2020 now with this car comes a warranty so also this car is guaranteed for three years anything that happened they will you know replace or they make you whole what's going to happen is this so it's 21 22 and 23 so it's covered for 21 year 22 and year 20 23. now what's going to happen is this when we sell the car when we sell the car in 2020 we have to report the expense although the expense may not take place till 2021 
2022 or 2023. It does not matter. We report the expense in the year the sale took place so we can match the revenue with the appropriate expenses. We have to match the revenue with the appropriate expenses. Therefore, we would report it as a liability, as an estimated liability. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example to see how this estimated warranty liability work. Let's assume on December 31st, a dealer sells a car for $16,000 with a maximum one year or 12,000 miles warranty cover covering parts. Past experience indicate that warranty expense average 4% of the car selling price. So we sold the car and with that car comes a one year warranty. Anything happened to that car within one year, we are responsible for it. Okay, so first let's record the sale. We debit cash, credit sales, debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory. And how did I come up with this 10,000? Just assume the dealer paid 10,000 for the car. So the dealer sold you a car for 16,000, which they paid 10,000. Now, they're not done. This is this took place on December 1st. Also on December 1st, what's going to happen is we're going to have to estimate our warranty. It's 16,000 times 4%. Based on our experience, we usually incur 4% of the selling price for the vehicle, and that's going to be $640. On that same day, we will debit. On the same day, we'll debit warranty expense. We will debit an expense of 640 credit estimated warranty liability of 640. So what we did is we recorded the expense in the same period that the sale took place. So the sale took place December 1st, the expense took place December 1st. Now on January 9th, 2020, a year later in the following year, the customer returned the car for repair and the dealer replaced a part for $200. At this point, we don't have an expense because we already took the expense at the, when, when we sold the car. Therefore, what we do is we debit estimated warranty liability, 200, and we gave them a part. You know, we credit our parts inventory, 200. If we gave them cash, we credit cash. If we assign an employee to work, we, you know, we we assign that payroll expense, uh, that payroll, pay, payroll payable, which is our cost for our payroll. So whatever we did give them, we have to credit. So basically, this is how warranties work. Now you might be saying, what happened? Because if you notice, we have 640 in warranty. So what happened to the warranty account is this. We had 640 and we and we only incurred 200. It means it means we still have 540. So a year later, if nothing happened, we just basically remove this warranty. Basically, how do we remove it? We reverse the entry. One way to do it is to reverse the entry. To rever so debit warranty expense, uh, debit warranty, I'm sorry, debit warranty payable and credit warranty expense for the 440. Or sometimes what we do, we might have other cars where they went over the warranty. So we cancel those against each other. So how the company does this, depending on the company's policy. But this is how we deal with warranty liability. In the next topic, we would look at contingent liabilities and times interest ratio. As always, I would like to remind you to like this recording, subscribe, and if you're looking for additional resources, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. It's worth it. It's You need those 7 to 10 extra points to pass your exam, and stay safe during the coronavirus outbreak. Good luck and study hard.